I'm Chiscool Gaming, and over 100,000 people have watched my original Joan of Arc guides. However, this guide is going to top them all, talking about the very best uses for Joan of Arc in 2020 and beyond, giving full details for talents, optimal pairings, and more. If you're looking to slay with the very best epic commander in Rise of Kingdoms, stick around. We're going to give you everything you need. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about Joan of Arc, who I will argue is the very best epic in Rise of Kingdoms. And although she is comparable to Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu will at some point be replaced by other legendaries, and Joan of Arc, my friends, she fights on. If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. We're a sponsored content creator, and it is remarkable to me that in a world in which players who have choices among every single legendary expertise in the game are still picking Joan of Arc to use. Why is that? In this video, we're going to be talking about what makes Joan of Arc so exceptional and why she continues to hold value in 2020 and honestly beyond into the future of Rise of Kingdoms. We'll then talk about her skills, giving a little more information on exactly how they work, although we have covered that very comprehensively in other videos. Then we'll go into the very best talent builds for Joan of Arc, and today we'll be presenting to you three different builds for your consideration. And then we'll review the order in which you should level up her skills if you're newer into the game and how you unlock her. And last but not least, of course, the most optimal pairings. Because look, although you could pair her with almost anyone, we're going to talk about what the top tier players are using still in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, of course, in all my long-form videos, timestamps are in the description, so you can jump to whatever part is most compelling to you. And let's start by talking about why Joan of Arc still holds such outrageous value in 2020? And the answer is actually very simple. If we look at her first skill, it does a tremendous buff. That is an area of effect buff, increasing stats and increasing rage gen. This buff is so good that, heck, if I go get a look in my Sunset Canyon for my kingdom... These players all use Joan of Arc up at the very top. And look, my kingdom is like 650 plus days old. I mean, these players have access to any commander they want. And yet, here is Joan of Arc in almost every single Sunset Canyon team without exception. And although Sun Tzu is replaceable at some point, Joan of Arc is not replaceable as a Sunset Canyon team commander. She also is irreplaceable in the open field, and even in 2020, somebody needs to bring a Joan of Arc to the open field, whether you're an Ark of Osiris, battling for the Altar of Darkness or Ancient Ruins, or good old-fashioned Kingdom Wars, somebody needs to bring Joan of Arc because this set of buffs is just astonishingly good. Now, what Joan of Arc lacks is march speed, tankiness, and survivability. And she gets some of that from her talents, but I'm jumping the gun. We'll talk about that very soon. Let's go into the skills that Joan of Arc has, and these will illustrate to us why she's still so good and will be into the future. The first skill over the course of the next four seconds grants her march and all nearby friendly marches a powerful buff that increases infantry health by 30%, cavalry defense by 30%, and archer attack by 30%. You also get an additional 50 rage per second. That is 200 rage over 4 seconds, which is insane. This buff is not amazing if she's only buffing her own march, but when she's buffing 3, 4, 5 other marches, like you'll get in Canyon, a total of five marches or four marches getting the buff. This is where things get out of hand, especially because we now know that health is one of the best stats in the game, and many players like to stack infantry in Sunset Canyon, bringing most or almost entirely infantry marches. This buff is just 
crazy good. The second skill is gathering related and also increases both the speed and troop load. As it turns out, you do a lot of gathering in Rise of Kingdoms. This skill is great, but not a lot we should be talking about here. The next skill has a chance to heal you, 10% chance to trigger a healing factor of 450, and it can only trigger once every five seconds. Honestly, the first skill is so good that the remaining skills need to not be as good. This is not impressive at all. Um, this is 450 healing factor. If I just compare to, heck, Pelagius, on his last skill, he gets 450 healing factor for two seconds, and there's no internal cooldown listed here. So this is more than twice as good as what we see on Joan of Arc. This is just because her first skill is too good. Okay, so this skill is not very good to make up for it. It is noteworthy that she does have healing, though, which gives the march a little bit of sustain. The fourth skill increases your normal attack damage by 25%, and the expertise skill is simply increasing the effectiveness of your first skill. It increases the duration by 2 seconds and also improves the buff quality for the rage generation from 40 to 50 rage a second, which is meaningful, but truly incremental. It's the two second to four second boost that makes the expertise on this commander very, very exceptional. Given that Joan of Arc really is a one trick pony, she's all about buffing other nearby marches. What are the builds that we can recommend? We've prepared three for you today, and this commander has not as many options because really two of her three trees are not compelling for dumping the primary uh, sort of amount of your points into. So the integration tree, not very compelling. The gathering tree, obviously not combat oriented. And the support tree is actually gangbuster. This support tree is a part of the reason why Joan of Arc is in fact powerful because she can generate lots of rage. Let's go get a look at these builds now. The first build we're going to show you is oriented toward either canyon or open field using a single troop type. Right now, I use all cavalry with Joan of Arc, and this build works incredibly well. Uh, we've avoided picking up talent points that would benefit you for bringing multiple troop types. Now, the first points you should put your talents into for Joan of Arc are, of course, to go and get Rejuvenate. This is absolutely insane, crazy good. It generates huge amounts of rage whenever the primary and secondary commander use their abilities. A Joan of Arc primary with almost any other secondary will fire off her skills between every six to seven seconds. It's totally nuts. We also go all the way to emergency protection to make it so that after you take skill damage, you have a chance to reduce further damage taken. In addition, we picked up counterattack to make it so that after you get that heal from Joan of Arc's third skill, you get a little bit of a attack boost for three seconds. And if you pair with another commander that does healing, this just gets even better. We make our way over to fresh recruits to increase our troop capacity, as well as Steely Soul to increase the normal attack damage. We've got some march speed here, which is really good in the open field. And honestly, these skills in the middle of this tree are so unimpressive, they're not even really worth talking about. If you were going to use Joan of Arc in the open field with this build, I might recommend that you drop one point out of counterattack and put that into march speed. That way you can get around the battlefield just a little bit faster. Now, if you want to use Joan of Arc as a primary in Canyon or the open field and you're bringing mixed troops, here is the build that I would recommend to you. Um, this build invests in the least amount of march speed possible and gets as many stats as you can. Start by making your way up to Cage of Thorns, and we've only put one point into this. If you are battling in the open field, you would want to have the full five points for open field control. Because we're using this in Sunset Canyon, we'll really just have that one point there in order to buff the nearby Ethelfled, who cares about marches being slowed in order to do extra damage. We did pick up Armored to the Teeth, which is really solid, giving you 4% damage taken reduction because we're going to use three different troop types to pull that down. The final build we're going to show you is for Gathering. And look, uh, if you're using her for Gathering, you don't need to bring her to level 60. However, we have a level 60, so we've applied more points. You start by getting superior tools. From there, I really like Modified Axle and Tourniquet uh, to get more march speed and then remove or reduce the number of troops that ultimately 
get wounded in combat. From there, I would make your way up to rejuvenate, assuming you're going to be in combat with this commander for some reason. You can get expert design to improve your siege stats, and there is additional march speed up into the integration tree. The order in which you level up your skills on Joan of Arc is actually an area of interesting debate. I would argue that you should max the first skill, then max the second skill, because look, you're going to do so much gathering with this commander, you really do need to max these skills. From there, it doesn't really matter uh, whether or not you take them to three or four stars to continue to apply experience and also additional skills. Joan of Arc is available in the beginning of the game as a starting commander, and you'll get a bunch of her sculptures from quests if you chose France as your starting civilization. You also get the Joan from Silver Keys, Gold Keys, uh, you can get her from the expedition. There's even occasional events that award Joan of Arc sculptures. For the most part, you're going to be getting her from Gold Keys, and I'll make the argument that this is one of the very first commanders that you should go and max out. I'll have a link up in the top to my beginner guide where we go more in depth on this commander and why she's one of the first three commanders that are epic that you should expertise ultimately choosing between Boudicca, Sun Tzu, and Joan of Arc. When we talk about the pairings for Joan of Arc, you've got a, a really a lot of great options if you're using her as the primary or the secondary, which is the first thing we should talk about. If you're using Joan of Arc in the open field to battle against other players, people will focus her down because they know she's that good. So my recommendation is that you actually hide Joan of Arc as a secondary behind some other more tanky commander, like a Richard I or Charles Martel or Constantine or Alexander the Great, so that people don't just focus her down because they see, hey, I need to kill the march that's buffing everybody nearby, because yeah, it's that important to do. So generally, I would advocate that for open field combat, Joan of Arc should be the secondary, but if you're in a game mode like Canyon, then it doesn't really matter if she's the primary or the secondary. And you saw that in Canyon in My Kingdom, she often is the secondary commander because the integration tree is just not very compelling, especially when compared to a commander like Constantine, who was serving as the primary and as the infantry tree, which does just so much more. So if we do now get a look at the legendary pairings, I'm just going to talk about my top recommendations rather than list every single pair. Those top recommendations are going to be Richard I, Charles Martel, Saladin, and Alexander the Great. I gave a top four, what the heck. Those commanders are all really exceptional. If you're in a game mode like Canyon or the open field, you're either hiding behind one of those commanders or for uh, you know, a game mode like Canyon, you might use Joan of Arc as the primary in order to get more uh, rapid skills fired off. I, however, find that in my own kingdom, more often than not, Joan of Arc is the secondary because of the talent tree availability. And for that reason, for most players, she really should be the secondary. The only exception where I have her actually as the primary is that she is astonishingly good when paired with none other than Takeda. It's weird how tanky this combination is and how exceptional it is. If you are going for Takeda and you're in the late game, then Joan of Arc primary with Takeda secondary is a really sick play that works incredibly well. There is, of course, one more pair at the legendary tier that we have to talk about, which is the Ethelfled. Ethelfled and Joan of Arc are a phenomenal pairing. However, a lot of people seem to be splitting them in a game mode like Canyon because both of them have the support tree so that you can use both of them as primary commanders. That works well in that game mode, but if you're using one march in Kingdom versus Kingdom or to bring to Altar of Darkness or in a war or even Ark of Osiris, you can pair together the Ethelflaed and the Joan of Arc. The downside of that is that they really are lacking in march speed and mobility and... Gosh, if people were going to focus down just a Joan of Arc, I'm going to tell you, they see both Ethelflaed and Joan of Arc together, and that march is going to get freaking melted. So if you can maneuver very intelligently and carefully on the battlefield because you don't have a lot of extra march speed, you can use the Joan of Arc and Ethelflaed together. However, you are far more likely to get caught out of position 
And if that's the case, you might consider using the Ethelflaed as the primary, not only because the talents are better with the leadership and peacekeeping tree, but those trees will offer you substantially more march speed in order to get around the battlefield. So in that case, the Ethelflaed primary, Joan of Arc secondary, would be what I recommend. Now, when we get a look at epics, again, I'm only going to talk about my top three or so epics that you might go and pair with. If you are in a game mode like Canyon, you're going to try to get a lot of tankiness. If you are doing that, you can pair with a commander like CPO Africanus to get that tankiness that Joan of Arc needs to be a frontline commander. Other commanders that you can pair would be Pelagius, Boudica, or even Sun Tzu. I'll make the argument that among those choices, Sun Tzu is the one that is the most tanky, because Sun Tzu has some damage taken reduction and some additional infantry health, and in a perfect world, you might bring more infantry to that party, especially if you have Sun Tzu as a primary, but that feels unlikely, because you're going to be more likely to have Sun Tzu specialized to defend your city. Now, it's worth mentioning that Joan of Arc really is good with any of these epics in a game mode like Canyon. However, if you are battling in the open field to support your allies, I would recommend marches that either give you some speed or give you some buffing or debuffing if you're using all epics. If you are going that route, I like the idea of the Joan of Arc primary, Boudicca secondary. Boudicca does a lot of debuff, which are really exceptional. Joan of Arc gives a lot of buffs, and also you have hasty departure to move through resource nodes and cities to navigate combat. I think that combination is actually really solid. I also really like the combination of Herman with Joan of Arc if you're bringing full archers because you're going to get a really solid march speed boost over here. You get some additional rage gen and a silence and a lot of single target damage and reduces the rage of the target. Herman is a sleeper pick that I think more people should be focused on. All in all, I continue to be impressed by Joan of Arc and I have a hard time believing that she will be replaced in either the near term or far term, because it is unlikely, at least it seems that way to me, that the developers will release yet another area of effect buff that is all but mandatory in almost every single game mode in Rise of Kingdoms. I suspect, however, that they aren't going to nerf this buff, that they feel it's in balance at this point in time, and so you should enjoy using your Joan of Arc, and I suspect that unless they release some legendary that's got a buff that would overwrite Joan of Arcs, we'll be using her for the foreseeable future. Let me know below in the comments how you're using Joan of Arc, and I would strongly recommend you check out the links in the description for additional videos about commanders. We've got a Commander Guides playlist, which is really exceptional whether you're looking at epics or legendaries. I think you'll find something incredibly valuable there. If you did enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel for more daily Rise of Kingdoms guides and videos. Throw a like on the video and that'll really help out the channel. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.